Hello, thanks for joining me again here today. I am continuing to work on this Santa on aluminum. Now, why on aluminum? <laughs> because it's an adventure. Am I an expert at painting on aluminum? No, go to my friend David Dunlop. He's the one who first introduced me to the concept, and then I watched some of his blogs. Again, that's David Dunlop, a uh, good painting buddy of mine. We painted together in France about seven or eight years ago, had a great time together. Uh, you should follow his blog, by the way. And uh, he's the one that first introduced me. A lot of people paint, relatively, a lot of people paint on aluminum. <laughs> and um, I'm doing it simply because it's fun and it's a challenge. In fact, I've decided in the last day that if I were ever to teach a college painting class or a painting class that lasted for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, one of the things I would have my students do would be to do a painting on aluminum so that they grasp or begin to grasp or get a better grasp on what is now called edge control. I talked about this yesterday. <laughs> I never heard the term edge control until three or four years ago. Maybe I was in the wrong circles, probably was, but uh, before then it was just called hard and soft edges, brushes, painterly technique, and so on and so forth. But now I want you to know it's called edge control. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff Watts. Um, and uh, I've been, uh, it, aluminum just puts your face in it, man. You could, it's, it, as you maybe imagine, it's hard to paint on aluminum um, because the paint slides across the surface just as much as it sticks to the surface. So you really have to change up the way you apply the paint. And it brings the issue of brush strokes right. You can't avoid it. You just have to work with it. Now, I like it. I mean, I'm having great fun. Let me, let me pick this up for a second and give you a, a feeling. Because when you just see it static, you're, you're not really seeing what's happening here. But maybe if I hold it like this and then um, move it in different ways, you can see the rather iridescent quality that the painting has when it's painted on this semi-shiny semi -shiny metal. Uh, by the way, David Dudlop and others also paint on, on copper and uh, other things as well. So aluminum is just one option. Um, so I, I like the iridescence. I've done a Santa one time before. Last year I did a portrait on Santa, so no doubt uh, on aluminum. I did Santa on aluminum is what I mean to say. So that's why it came to mind this year. Um, I'm copying a painting by Harold Sunbloom, the papa or the grandpapa of all Santa painters in the whole world uh, because he painted the Coca-Cola Santas for 40 years in the 20th century. And uh, in my last episode, I was working very hard with the position of this hand. Since we last spoke, I have drawn the hand one and two halves more times. It can only happen in art, one and two halves. Okay, got it? So I think I've got, I've got the hand in the position that I want it. Now, I started working just a little bit on the face. Let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see what's going on. Um, I still have work to do with this eye. I'm not completely satisfied. And by the way, I'm, here's my reference is on my phone. You know, I've downloaded this image by Harold Sundblom. Even though I have, the, have it printed here left and right, it's really my phone that gives a much better uh, rendering much better image uh, three cheers for high technology three cheers for phones and the way they can be used now this is my old phone um, my new phone is being used to control my camera right now of course so three cheers for old phones <laughs> that still work perfectly well as uh, cameras so let's work a little bit um, first of all a little comment about my brushes I have switched over to a bunch of soft brush, bristle brush, soft brushes, hair brushes, I call it. I don't mean hair on your head. I mean sable or imitation sable. Most of these, of course, are fake sable brushes. Uh, this is the only one here that's still a, a bristle brush, hair as opposed to bristle. And um, that's because I find that they work on the aluminum more easily. They don't scrape off the paint quite as quickly as 
the bristle brushes. Now, are you with me? Let me, let me zoom out. I want to talk about something. The essence, and if you're a student, man, let this sink into the deepest part of your soul. Embrace this. Grasp this. Begin to try to get a hold of this. The essence of good painting. Now, listen to me carefully. I'm saying painting the verb, the act of painting. Not a painting, the noun, but the verb, act of painting. The essence of doing painting is making I've been saying this for years, pounding this for years, and I'm more and more convinced it's true. The essence of doing good painting is making good marks. I usually say interesting marks. Today I'm just going to say good marks. And the question is, big question mark, what doth a good mark make? <laughs> what is a good mark? Now I said yesterday evening when I was working on this, I said just go look. Go look at the masters. Look at Rembrandt. Look at Franz Hals. I've been talking about him a bunch lately. If you want some modern contemporary people, look at Richard Schmid. Three of my favorites that are right on the top of my mind. Richard Schmid, Tibor Negi, N-A-G-Y, out of Eastern Europe, somewhere I forgot, forget. Sorry, Tibor. Jeremy Mann, uh, out of San Francisco. They're, they're all pretty extreme. There's, uh, look at Oil Painters of America. Just go to OPA, oilpaintersofamerica.com or something. Look it up, .org. And, and 80, 90% of their, the artists that are in their show every year. Look at, um, what's that other group? I can never think of names when I'm, when I'm videoing, so I'll come back to it later. Um, ARC, Art, A-R-C, Art Restoration something ARC anyway look it up and look at the painters you'll find boo koodles uh, middle of the 20th century look at Edgar Payne P-A-Y-N-E basically the, the list of artists I'm describing here are all the painterly painters as opposed to the hyper realistic photorealistic painters again don't get me going <laughs> on, on this photorealistic binge photoreal and I do some photoreal go to my website I'm, I'm telling you to the truth uh, I've done photorealistic airbrush photorealistic uh, oil painting it's fun it really is fun but I don't consider it great painting anyway that's another story again oh won't get my get me going but the question is what are good marks what are interesting marks so number one go look at good painters like the list I just gave you and that'll tell you but let me try to be a little more descriptive what is a good mark and, and it's the act of here of painting on aluminum that is really, as I said, rubbing my face in this question and this issue. And I'm, while I'm painting, I'm going to try to demonstrate it for you, and I'm going to try to describe it for you. Whoops. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't know where that color came from. That's not the color I expected on that, on that stroke. I'm going to leave it there. That is probably probably a good mark I'm gonna do another one probably I'm gonna do another one right above it are you students watching I hope you are I'm gonna do another one right ab above that I'm mixing up a little bit more titanium white on this brush to make it lighter I'm looking at my reference it's in front of me down here on the on the easel on my phone And one more. Okay, I'm going to stop there, pause there for a second. Let me think. Nope, nope, I'm, I'm doing well. So I'm going to mix more titanium white, more light, lighter. Not white, but lighter than what I've been doing. And let's do, a, let's do another stroke right here. Okay, now I'm going to do something right now for the first time in this particular, in the last three minutes. I'm going to hit that bit of wet paint for the second time. Do you know what I mean? Okay, you students, I hope you're noticing. What have I, so I just hit it twice. So the question is, what have I done with, I did one, two, three, four strokes 
and then the fifth stroke touched the fourth one. If you're a beginner painter, I hope you're taking note. You will notice that every one of those strokes was a single stroke. It was a one stroke. I took my brush and I went zip and I picked my brush up off the canvas. <laughs> Am I being dramatic enough for you? Then I mixed up a new color. Then I dragged my brush across the canvas. Sorry, aluminum. Zip and pick my brush up off the canvas. <laughs> Again, dramatic enough for you. <laughs> and then I did it one more time. I dragged my brush across the aluminum and picked my brush up off the aluminum. Here's the point I'm trying to make. If left to your own untrained and semi-skilled inclinations, here's how most people paint. Let me find a piece of scrap paper here. Let me demonstrate some bad painting for you, okay? As opposed to what I just did. Let me zoom in. I don't want to mess up my painting, so I'll, let me just try to hold it down here. Here's what most people tend to do. Whoops, what most people tend to do. Come on, let me get it right. Okay, here's what most people tend to do. Let's say they put down this one stroke, just like I did. Zip. And whereas I went bonk, and removed my brush completely from the canvas. Here's what most students do. Let's retake. Pretend I'm doing that same stroke again. Whoop. And what do they do? Do you know? Yes, they go like this. They go like this. They do what I call brushy, brushy, brushy. <laughs> brushy, brushy, brushy. <laughs> <laughs> I am being rather dramatic, don't you think? Oh my goodness, brushy, 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 gives me the heebie-jeebies, the willies. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sending my viewers away in, in droves, probably, excuse me, uh, um, eyelash in my eye. <sighs> what is a good stroke? In most cases, a good stroke is a single stroke. Several years ago, I don't know, there's probably still out there somewhere. In fact, if you Google it, maybe I'll do this sometime when I'm taking a break and, and see if it's still out there. Let me look for another place where I can do some more single strokes. Uh, there, there was this, several years ago, I was starting to say, there was this hobby, craftsy um, thing, fad, trend, called one stroke, one stroke painting. Some woman out in Kansas... I'm being facetious about the Kansas part, but <laughs> some woman somewhere who was a decent painter decided to start teaching other people that you can do all kinds of beautiful paintings, each stroke applied just one, one, one stroke, and that's why they called it one stroke, and they did all kinds, toll painting, they did country painting, they did flowers, and they did, you know, I don't know mailbox with daisies at the bottom that, that kind of art you know what i'm talking about decorator anyway never mind never mind i won't try to describe it It was fine but here's the funny part even though it, it was sort of a from an me an artist point of view it was quite corny ironically that she this lady whoever she was was actually teaching without trying to she was actually teaching people a pretty good way to think about painting here by the way here's thumb painting <laughs> and I don't have any cadmiums or cobalts in my paint I don't think I have any toxic anything in my paint um, anyway so one stroke if you want to look it up that's not a bad way to think about painting because 90% of the time when I put a, a bit of paint on the canvas. I put it and leave it. Uh, let me go back to my, my good friend. I'm being facetious here. He doesn't know me from the man of the moon. But I say he's my good friend because he's a good, good, good teacher. Mark Carter. Again, if you're not subscribing to his blog, if you don't follow his, his he's got all, he's very generous with his information. Mark Carder, C-A-R-D-E-R. -E 
I believe he was the official painter uh, for President, both Presidents Bush. Uh, and he's very generous with his information. He has all kinds of good stuff on, online. Um, one of the things he teaches, let me back out here just a little bit while I mix paints. He's a very, very deadpan fellow, personality. My personality would probably drive him crazy. And the reverse is almost true, <laughs> except I get such a kick out of him. Um, so we're very different. We're very, very different. He's very deadpan and low-key. And uh, I guess I'm not so much deadpan and low-key. Um, I'm mixing this color up for something. Oh, yeah. And um, he, and somewhere in his teaching, I forget exactly where it is, but you can find it. If you look for it, you'll find it. He says, he says to his students, here's what I want you to do. I want you to plan to do the worst painting of your entire life. Okay? So he sets his students up, say, I'm going to do bad painting. And here's what's going to be bad about it. I'm, and he teaches you how to match color. He's very good at matching color. And he says, here's what's going to be bad. And I think it's a portrait, he says. Or, but maybe not. Maybe not a portrait. It could be a, a still life. He does a lot of still lifes. He says, here's why it's going to be bad. I hope you're listening. This is brilliant. And he says, here's why this is going to be the worst painting of your life. Because you're not going to blend a single stroke. Not one. Not one. No brushy brushy. He says, every bit of paint you put on this canvas, you're going to put the paint down. <laughs> That's the sound of paint hitting canvas. <laughs> you're going to put paint down and you're going to leave it. You're not going to touch it. Are you with me? He says to his students, are you with me? This is going to be the worst painting of your entire life because you're not going to blend anything. So he's, as you can imagine, he's tricking his students. Brilliant, brilliant. So he has his students do a painting, no blending, just stroke, stroke, stroke. Stroke color matching, matching color, stroke, 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 stroke. And when they're all done, they sit back and take a look. And I, I would be, it'd be delightful to be in a classroom where he has this going because I guarantee his point is he's tricking them all. They are, in fact, producing from 99% of his students or 95% of his students, they're, in fact, producing the best painting of their entire life because they're not blending. Okay. Let me, yay, Mark Carter. Brilliant. Way to go. Um, let me zoom back in here and talk a little bit. Let me zoom back out. <laughs> what I'm trying to communicate today in this episode, what doth an interesting mark make? I say the essence, the sin qua non, Latin, without which nothing. If you don't got this, you don't got nothing. That's what that means in Latin. If you don't know this, you've got nothing. The sine qua non of good painting is interesting marks. And the question is, what doth an interesting mark make? What are, what are interesting marks? And I'm, I'm coming up with a couple descriptions. One is no blendy, blendy, blendy. No brushy, brushy, brushy. You put the stroke down and you leave it. This is so counter to what 95% of art students do. Because 95% of art students, their default setting is... Brushy, brushy, brushy. I know I'm intense. Because <laughs> I want you guys to get this. I want you to get it. No brushy, brushy. The only time you do brushy, brushy, brushy is when you are intentionally obfuscating texture. <laughs> and probably not one time in your life have you ever said to yourself, I believe I shall now obfuscate texture. <laughs> are you with me? I use that word because nobody ever uses it. Because you shouldn't be very often, ob okay, let me use ordinary language for a minute, okay, you with me? Even obfuscate, that's a mnemonic device, help you remember. The only time you do brushy, brushy, brushy is when you're intentionally diminishing texture, and there's a name for that, it's called scumbling. Scumbling is a valid painting technique. But God help your crusty little soul. <laughs> you probably didn't know it was crusty. You should not be scumbling all day, every day. Got it? Scumbling is one technique. It's one. You have a whole series of brush strokes. In fact, I have a chart 
seven across and seven uh, and six down. I have a, a diagram of 42. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll post this on my Facebook. So you guys, my Facebook is Facebook forward slash Dan the Art Man. Same handle as my YouTube. I'll put my 42 brush strokes by Dan Nelson. Uh, uh, um, scumbling is one tool among 42. But too many artists left their own devices, they scumble all the time. So what I'm trying to describe today is what is good, what are interesting brush strokes. Let me, now that's, I'm done with description number one, that is no brushy brushy, no blendy blendy, no scumbling, no obfuscating texture. That's I'll sing the same thing four times. Rule description number two, what is a good or interesting brush stroke. Okay, let's zoom in here and I'm going to try to demonstrate while I describe it. Let me look for a place on here that I want to paint. I've got a mid-tone kind of brownish color on my brush right now. Oh, by the way, I'm giving I'm giving a little lesson in. Let me see if I can get you guys a little bit closer to my painting. Hang on while I rock and roll you all over the place. Hang on, hang on. Not done yet. Get in here. How would you like to see my ceiling? I know that's what you always wanted to see. Hang on, hang on. I'm going to turn you around. Bear with me here for just a minute. I'm I'm really trying to get you in closer to my. And I have to move <laughs> several things. Woohoo! Earthquake, huh? Okay, that's not bad. That's a little bit closer. All right. By the way, at the same time, I'm I'm giving a little lesson, evidently, on how to paint wrinkles in skin. What I just put down there was a great big fat brown mark to represent the wrinkle. Of course, it's not going to stay that way. Now I've got a lighter color. And I'm going to skinny up that dark mark I made just a minute ago by brushing right up against it. And I'm going to skinny it up a little bit more. Okay, but let me get back on, on the subject. What are, good, what are good brush strokes? One of the best answers is good brush strokes. Are you ready? Here's a definition. This is new today. New definition today. Good brush strokes are discernible. Good brush strokes are seeable. Good brush strokes are figure outable. <laughs> Good brush strokes can be seen easily. That is to say, Good brush strokes leave a clear history of human movement. If you've been with me for very long, you know that this history of human movement is one of my one of my big, big, big foundational themes in painting. What we like to see in a painting or a drawing is that a human being, somebody, some creature like us, was here. That's what we like to see on a painting. Creature like me made these marks. So let me let me try to describe that again. What is an interesting or a good brush stroke? One description is a good brush stroke is easily discernible. Let's take, and again, I can't get any closer than I already am, but let's take that last stroke that I just made. You can actually tell that I used a flat brush. By the way, flat brushes can be dangerous, but that's another story. Um, you can tell I took a flat brush and went like this. Boom. You can tell almost just by looking at it, you can tell how fast I moved. You can tell the angle that I moved. You can tell uh, the orientation of the brush. In fact, if I handed, if you were here in my studio, I could hand you this brush and I could say, now, you reproduce uh, the mark that I just made, the movement that I just made. And by looking at the mark there in my canvas, you could, you could, Move your hand almost exactly like mine. Does that make sense? So here's, here's what I'm getting at. I just switched to a larger brush, by the way. Um, 
good or interesting brush strokes are seeable, are discernible is my best is the best word. That is, you can see how the stroke was made. It's easy to see, in fact, how the stroke was made. And if it's a good stroke, the viewer actually feels like they could walk up to the canvas and they should feel like, huh, is that all there is to painting? Well, I could make a mark like that. Are you with me? You hearing me? That's what good painting does to you. You look at it, when you look at it up close, you feel like, Huh, I could make a I could make a mark like that. Why don't you tell me it was so easy? <laughs> good good brush strokes make it look easy. There's another description. A little bit more playful description. Good brush strokes make it look easy. And there's an Italian name for that that's slipping my mind. It's a my it's a word that describes the behavior of the court. The king's court. They were supposed to behave in a certain way. It was an air of lightness. It was fake. But that there's, and that word has, has slipped over into the art world. That's the way we're supposed to paint, as though, it, as though it's easy. So there you go. Let me back you guys up. More earthquake. Sorry. Hang on, hang on. There's my control camera, as you can see. Glad you, I know you wanted to see that. Okay. Now let me back out now. Just a little bit. So I've given you two descriptions, and I'm going to hang up here in just a little while. Two descriptions of good marks. One is, most of the time, they're a single stroke. No brushy, brushy, brushy. Secondly, Hello, Wave Gaming. What should I buy if I want to start painting? Oh, good question. Paint. <laughs> okay, I'll get back to you in just a second. So I've given you two descriptions for a good, a good mark. One is no blendy, 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 no brushy, brushy, no, thank you, Femox. No uh, brushy, brushy, no blendy, blendy. That's the same. And then number two, discernible. That is, the strokes, a good brush stroke is one that you, you feel like you could easily reproduce yourself because you can see how it was made. Okay, Whew. boy, that was, a, that was an intense lesson. <laughs> if I didn't blow you away. Okay, someone just asked, what should you buy? Uh, buy, I would say, go ahead and buy a, a, an oil painting kit, a box, you know, that has like 8 or 12 colors in it. The, the people that put those boxes together usually know what they're doing, and they usually do a pretty good job of picking out the colors that ought to be picked out by uh, beginner painters. So that's my answer. Um, they might even include brushes in it, and, and then you buy a whole bunch of small, cheap canvases. Buy cheap canvases so that you're not afraid to ruin them, so you're not afraid to waste them, because you want to waste them. You want to you want to use them fast and get rid of them. You want to go through them really fast, especially at the beginning. Okay, good question. Wonder how many other comments I missed. Sorry about that. Um, I like catching the ones catching comments whenever I can. Okay, that's good enough. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again later today. Still working on this Santa on aluminum. Who knew that this was going to turn into to such an intense painting lesson? But I hope that's helpful. Leave your comments, please. And if you're an artist, please let your fellow artist friends know uh, that I'm here and please subscribe. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.